your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First Updates Now is supported by Stryker Careers. Stryker's commitment to medical device technology innovation has made it a top career destination for those in FIRST. FIRST alumni and mentors are given top priority in their internship and career applications. Come create the next medical innovation that saves lives at careers.stryker.com. Uh, next up is the FIRST in Michigan district. We had three events happen in the uh, Mitten State, including Calvin University event, formerly Forest Hills, the Detroit district event, and Kettering One. Our featured event this week comes from Calvin University, and boy, it looked like a great event as I followed along. Mike is here to tell us about the details. Mike? Yeah, Calvin University set an impressive bar for week one. They had the highest cargo RP, RP completion of all week one events, with 30% of qualification alliances completing the RP, and an impressive 34.5% completion rate for the hangar RP. Uh, Team 3357, the Comets from Grand Rapids, ran away with the number one seed with 40 RP and an 11 and 1 record. They created a hometown alliance by selecting another Grand Rapids team, 2075 Enigma Robotics. They finished out the alliance with 6122 Potential Energy from Bear Lake. The number one alliance proved to be a strong, proved to be strong with their seven ball auton capability and fantastic teleop scoring. Comets easily sank shots into the upper hub from the protection of the launch pad leaving 2075 to soak the opposing alliance's defense. With their turret and hard-to-push drivetrain, they couldn't be shut down. 6122 played a great ball denial game and some intermittent defense. The synergy between these three teams propelled them through the first two rounds of ELIMS and onto the finals, where they would face the number two alliance, captained by West Side favorite 1918 NC Gears from Fremont, Michigan, picking East Side visitors 1023 Bedford Express from Temperance. Uh, they rounded out the alliance with rookie team 8612, Squires Robotics from Granville. NC Gears and Bedford were both swerve robots, primarily favoring the fender shot, but they played some great opportunity, opportunistic defense throughout their, their run. Uh, finals one for the Red Alliance was plagued with a lot of missed shots. 8612 played very effective defense, um, very clean as well, on 2075. They're basically glued to Enigma's bumper. Meanwhile, Comets had several unfortunate bounce outs for their long shot. Uh, the Blue Alliance held red to just eight teleop cargo. 1023 saw an opportunity for a last minute game of climb chicken, uh, which meant 3357 was only able to get to the mid rung, leading to a 56 to 56 tie in the first match. Finals two, uh, 1023 went full-time defense after what appeared to be some trouble in taking the ball. They also seemed to have some other robot trouble. They, uh, they stopped moving several times throughout the match. Without Bedford's offensive power, the Blue Alliance was only able to put up six teleop cargo, and Red Alliance took it 79 to 51. Finals three, Bedford was back up in scoring, but it just wasn't enough. Uh, while they put up the most points anyone put up against the number one alliance, the Blue Alliance just couldn't keep up. Uh, number one alliance took the win with an 85 69 victory. Congrats to teams 3357, the Comets, 2075, Enigma, and 6122, Potential Energy, for a well earned win. Uh, congrats to the finalists, 1918 NC Gears, 1023 Bedford Express, and 8612 Squires Robotics. Uh, on the chairman's front, 1023 earned themselves a cling bling by taking up the, their eighth chairman's award. EI went to 6122 Robovikes from Grayling. Back to you. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Yeah, I watched some of the highlights from that event and was following along a bit on the Blue Alliance um, in between breaks at, at Detroit. Some impressive scores out there, and wow, I'm super impressed with the comments. I can't wait to see more from them. So up next, we have Nick Jr., who's covering two events for us. He was out at Detroit, as well as covering, uh, covering the Kettering 1 uh, district event. Nick, what you got for us? Thanks, Steve. Uh, so starting off to the event that you and I were both at and headed down to Motown uh, for the first uh, event here, uh, it was the Detroit event uh, held at Cass Tech High School. Uh, I personally, like I said, volunteered at this event, um, and it did not disappoint. Uh, Team 33, the Killer Bees, started off qualifications uh, with a loss in their first match, but quickly gained momentum back to regain the number one seed by the end of Friday. The robot featured a five ball autonomous and a consistent high rung climber with the ability to go to the traversal by the end of qualifications. 
um, but didn't uh, use the traversal at all during the competition, um, just for the fact that they didn't need it and wasn't worth the risk of uh, possibly falling and breaking the robot. Uh, team 5090, the Torknados, and Team 1701, the Robo Cubs, and Team 3414, the Hackbots, uh, were all in first place at some point on Friday, though. Uh, the Killer Bees would end qualification strong uh, and would be the number one overall seed at this event. Uh, they would go on to select Team 1701, the Robo Cubs, out of U of D Jesuit High School. Um, and th their robot featured a fast climb and a perfect knuckleball shot that uh, featured virtually no bounce out throughout the entire competition. Uh, their minor adjustments to their intake Friday night made them the perfect selection for 33 uh, as they complemented each other very well. The number one alliance would go on to face the number three alliance consisting of 7199 ABT Gators, Team 5090 the Torknados, and Team 5756 Reckon Crew in the finals. Um, the number one alliance would, or the, I'm sorry, the number, they beat the number two alliance, the number three alliance beat the number two alliance in the semifinals to move on to the finals. Uh, but the number one overall alliance did win Detroit um, in two matches. Chairman's was taken home uh, by Team 5177, the Kinematic Wolves, at this event. And something interesting to note is that there were no rookies at this event, so that there was no rookie accolades handed out. Moving up north into the Vehicle City, otherwise known as Flint, uh, there was the first of two district events taking place at Kettering University. The top teams in 5460 Strike Zone and Team 27 Team Rush uh, really led the show here, uh, as I expected and alluded to in my preview last week. Good to know that if uh, FanDuel first was a thing and I did bet on them, uh, I would have made some cash. So, um, you know, that, that's a plus side here. Um, fantasy first, you know, we can call it a couple things. But anyhow, uh, let's take a look at really what happened here. Uh, 27 team rush uh, towards the middle end of Friday really turned it on. Uh, had some climber issues at the beginning, but seemed to iron that out uh, during lunch on Friday and, you know, ended up turning it around very quickly here. Uh, 5460 was probably in the top three of the teams shooting in the high goal at this event. Uh, really liked their shot accuracy overall at the event and thought they did a great job in autonomous and were really able to complement 27 in eliminations uh, with a successful two ball. 27 team rush out of Clarkston, uh, as stated, would go on to seed number one at this event and select Team 5460 Strike Zone out of the pier with their first selection. Uh, interesting to note, there were no upsets um, in this elimination rounds at Kettering. The number one alliance would go on to win this event. Uh, Chairman's was taken by Team 5114, the Titanium Tigers, uh, with the, this being only their second Chairman's Award win, the first coming in 2017. And Rookie All-Star was taken by 8767 Dark Horse Robotics from North Branch. Uh, interesting to note that there were no cling blings um, in Michigan this week, so... Got to get back to that. We love our cling blings here. So uh, back to you, Steve. All right. Thanks, Nick. Uh, a couple of things. So first off, a shout out to the Tornadoes 5090 out of Trenton. First of all, for their, you know, performance on the field. But wow, are they loud? They were right behind me uh, as GA at this event, and they were loud and raucous the entire two days of the event. So shout out to them. And uh, congrats to Strike Zone and uh, – uh, Team Rush for a great performance out at Kettering One. Our featured preview for this week is from Dan, who's covering the FIM District Milford event. Dan, what can we look forward to next week in Milford? Michigan Week 1 events brought lots of action, lots of RP, and very few penalties. We'll see if this event follows. Milford brings in 38 teams, none of which are in their first year of FRC. However, four have never seen a competition field before. This event will certainly pack a punch, and although many of these teams have been radio silent, on what their plan is for this year's game, my personal favorites still in the event are 67, the Hot Team, and 503, Frog Force. I also expect 862, Lightning Robotics, and 1718, the Fighting Pie, to seed high and make a deep run in playoffs at this event. Notably, 2834, Bionic Blackhawks, and 3707, Brighton Technodogs, both showed off their robots at Kettering Week 0 without a climbing mechanism. I do expect both to have added a traversal climb to their robot, and if so, I expect them to seed quite high and be in contention to win this event. We'll also see about 4362, the CSPA Gems. They had a slightly lackluster 2020 and 2021 performance after winning the state championship in 2019, and we'll see what they bring to the table. Last time this event was held, 67 teamed up with 5561 to take home gold, and both are back trying to defend their title. Teams 2145, 5065 and 5561 all competed in week one events and are on their second play. Now, though we don't know much about these robots, I do think the team culture field is a little more clear. 
with 503 entering into the Hall of Fame in 2021 and 2834 entering into the Hall of Fame in 2018. I expect 1718 to run away with chairmans here. We will see if 1481, the Riveters, or 2618, the Charge, might be able to catch them. Back to you, Steve. All right, so I've got Mike and Nick Jr. back in for this week's discussion. So, guys, my question is, what Michigan teams do you think will be in the top 25 this week? And then also, what teams do you think we should watch out for that won't be on that list? Mike, let's start with you. Yeah, so I, I think the team that's, of course, going to be up there, because they always are, is the Bees, right? Week one, Bees play, everybody votes them number one. But I really don't think they were the best team in Michigan this year, or this week. I think Rush really outdid themselves here, right? If you look at traversal climbs and high high goal scoring, Rush did not have nearly the bounce outs, and they didn't have um, – and they traversaled way more often than the Bees. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think one thing to note here, and like you said, Steve, the Bees actually didn't show their traversal once all weekend. Um, and, and just the way it is, I, I'm sure that they'll probably end up ahead of Rush. I hope not, but um, <laughs> if they do – I'm going to be disappointed, but it is what it is. And that's not a hate on the bees or anything. I think the bees really stepped it up from 2020. And I think the robot has great potential moving forward. But um, from what I did catch from Kettering one rush was, I mean, I, 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 like I would put a bet right now that rush is going to be in the finals at, at MSC because that, that robot is insane. Um, but another team that I think that always seems to turn it on towards MSC in 1918 looked pretty decent from what I saw. And I think that they always start out, um, not rough, but slow. And I think, um, you know, as the season goes on, they always end up in the final 10 to 15 teams in Michigan here. So I expect them to kind of ramp it up as well. Yeah. You know, Mike, I, I tend to agree with you. I think the bees are obviously a great team. They always are solid, but they didn't show that much in Detroit in terms of what they can really do that. Yeah. They and because they didn't need to, climb. right. They didn't need to exactly. They did go not, not the traversal, but they went on the third rung one time to get that four RP in match 39, which you can find in the clips of the week um, channel in our discord server. But um, you know, a team that I think nobody's mentioning is the Comets. I mean, 3357 looked incredible and scored more points than anybody except for rush and strike stone in the finals. Um, and I know at, I at one point they had the world record, but um, it got beat by someone at without penalties. So. OPR isn't everything, right? But Comets had highest OPR in, in Michigan. Um, now, interesting fact about OPR, Bees, and I know they were at a weaker event, but Bees were beat out by 5084, uh, which is the um, Fridgebot, the, Fridge Fridge the low the low goal team from uh, from Kettering. Consistently put up 15 to 17 balls in, in the low goal in, in, um, in, in qualification and had a traversal climb. So perfect ranking machine, right? Um, did, did great at Kettering. And, and so I'm curious if a team like that was at Detroit, what would have happened? Um, another sleeper pick that I have noted from, from Kettering that I got to watch out for in week two is a 1506 metal muscle. Um, yep. They're a, a swerve and a turret. That's the only one I've seen in Michigan so far. Uh, their shot there's always, looked, looked on point. There's all, in fact, we had that discussion. I think PJ, Nick and I at Detroit was, you know, Swerve and a turret, you should, you, you know, usually most teams do one or the other, but not very many teams do both. And I mean, I personally do see some advantages to doing both. Um, you, you can shoot from any angle on the field and look at orbit and that shooting while moving. I mean, that's, that's incredible. Can if you can work that out. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. Amazing. Thanks to Stryker Careers for their support in this video. Stryker's commitment to medical device technology innovation has made it a top career destination for those in FIRST. FIRST alumni and mentors are given top priority in their internship and career applications. Come create the next medical innovation that saves lives at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.